stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning worshiping him. Can you make some noise? Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. It's ugly sweater 
Christmas Sunday. Can y'all make some noise? All right. That's what I that's what I like to hear. Man, love seeing a house full of people excited to worship God and learn more about him. Uh, this morning, I just wanted to thank you guys for being here with us this morning. And look, I mean, like, we got Brandon over here with the ping pong snow. I don't even know what's going on with his shirt. You can literally play a game on it. We got a couple of Hercules over here. This guy's shirt's lighting up. Like, raise your hand if you wore an ugly sweater this morning. Thank you so much for participating. We're, we're glad here at Encounter Church to be able to just, like, have a little bit of fun. And, you know, that's isn't that okay that we have a little fun while we worship God? Amen. Um, so this morning, if you are a first-time guest with us, I'd ask that you would just notice in the seat back in front of you, there is a connect card. It looks just like this. If you would just take a moment, fill this out, and turn it in the Welcome Center on your way out. We actually have a gift for you. Uh, how many of you know it's awesome to, the first time you visit somewhere, they got a gift for you? Like, it's not even Christmas. We're just giving out gifts. That's, that's the kind of church we are, you know. Uh, so make sure you fill this out and turn that into the Welcome Center on your way out. We'd love to be able to connect with you um, and let you know that we appreciate you being here. Also, you'll notice there is a place for prayer requests. Man, how many of you need prayer in your life right now? Like, right, like Christmas is coming up, finances are struggling, COVID is crazy. Uh, if you're a teacher, my wife's a teacher in here, and I'm like, I don't even know how you deal with life. Uh, it's There's just a lot going on. So make sure that you fill this out if you have prayer requests, because here at Encounter Church, we take this very seriously. Like we really believe in the power of prayer and we believe that we want to be praying with you. So make sure you take this and fill this out so our pastors can be praying for you and praying with you. Uh, let's just bow our heads. And uh, I just wanna thank you guys for being here and just open this thing up with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for uh, this time that we have to be able to gather together and just worship you, Lord. I thank you for the fact that this house is packed with ugly sweaters this morning and that we're just ready to have a little fun and worship you this morning, Lord. God, I thank you for the message that's coming forth, and I thank you, thank you for this worship team and all that they're doing to praise you and lead us into your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Continue to worship with us. Child is this you lay to the on earth happy sleeping on manger's green with them don't see what shepherds watch our keeping This this is Christ again on shepherds God
Wow, how y'all doing today? <laughs> ugly Sweater Sunday, or as some of y'all thought it was, Ugly Clothes Sunday. Oh, no, sorry, that was wrong. Lord, I apologize. I should never go off script like that again. What are you all doing? You have matching naked Santa Clauses. I mean, seriously, stand up. Come on, you got, you got to stand up. Turn around, show everyone. I'm sorry, you guys that are watching online, you don't get to see this. Or, or, no, no, we don't want you to come up on stage. No. Or, actually, you're probably better off not seeing any of this. Wow, you all look great. Look at your neighbor and say, you look great. Woo, ugly sweater Sunday. To all of you that are watching online, man, we are so honored that you're with us today. We're so glad that you take time out to do this every single week. And... Um, letting us come into your home with all of this weirdness. I'm looking around the room, and guys, listen to me. Last week was Stretchy Pants Sunday. This week is Ugly Sweater Sunday. This is the weirdest church I've ever been a part of in my entire life. Give it up for yourselves for being so weird. It's fun, though, isn't it? Oh, i got to raise the bar. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me raise the bar. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do this while I'm talking for a second because this is, this is fun. I got a drawing for those that are, um, have ugly sweaters on. Brad's going to come help me out with this drawing real quick. And then Brandy's got something else we're going to do here in a second. Um, okay, so, man, that's a lot of tickets. Y'all ready? If you're wearing an ugly sweater, make some noise. If you want to win this exciting potting gift, ways, wait, 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 wait. Like Porky Pig all of a sudden. Ray, <laughs> this is going to go well. I can already tell. Okay, let's just go to the number. How's that? One, nine, one, five, zero, six. <laughs> Anybody? 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 Oh, okay, come on up here. Come on. Let's show off. Let's show off the sweater at home. Look right there in the camera and, and smile a little bit. There you go. Wow, not only does he wear a naked Santa, he then wins the prize. That's just horrible. Okay, so um, every single time that, that I speak, Tina, somebody comes up to me and goes, is, is Tina speaking today? I know. As my brothers would say, que lastima. Anyway, um, and so... I've been listening to Rosetta Stone. So, um, so, so every time they're like, teen, and I say, no, I'm speaking today. Isn't that great? And they go, no, she throws out candy. <laughs> and then she has friends stand up and yell and scare us and all this stuff that happened last week. Seriously, though, give it up for Tina. Last week was <laughs> phenomenal. And I, I, really, I really don't have a complex over it, but we do have a little friendly wager going for Christmas because it's been weird anyway. And so we're just going to raise the bar on that too. I got to turn this off because it's distracting me. And I got a little too much ADD for that. Um, and so while Tina's throwing out these little kisses and this little candy, I figured why not let's just, let's just go all out today. And I've got some friends. Friends, help me out. Zach in the back. Come on, guys. Help me out a little bit. Don't look up because these are big old candy bars. They're gonna like hurt somebody if you're not paying attention. And and uh, and uh, look at that. Look at oh he's he's ready for the pass, buddy. Look at that. Oh one-handed. What? Nobody wants any. Oh that's better. Okay. All right. All right. Where are my friends at? Where are my friends at? Whoa. Everybody over here. Over here. Over here. Oh. It's hard to throw chocolate bars. Yeah, give it up for Brandon. Yeah, give it up for my friends. Yeah, give it up for free chocolate. All right, seriously, that was a lot of fun. Uh, no wonder she does that. Um, she came up to me after first service, though, and said, challenge accepted. So I don't know what's going to happen in the next couple weeks, but it's going to be crazy around here. Do not miss it. Tonight, 6 o'clock, is going to be so much fun. We're gonna we're gonna light up a tree, um, not 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 fire light. That would be fun. But we're gonna we're gonna light up a Christmas tree tonight out back. If you haven't seen the 20 foot Christmas tree out there, it has been getting some um, 
airtime in the community. People are calling us, asking about it. I had neighbors walk up to me yesterday. When are you doing this thing? We're going to be there. So it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Don't miss it. Come dress in your uh, warm attire, but we will have some fire pits and hot chocolate and all kinds of cool stuff tonight. And then we have a very special treat that I cannot tell you what it is, but I can tell you Brandon is involved. So just saying, it, it probably will get a little crazy tonight as well. All right, we're going to try to say something that has been the source of a lot of humorous conversations, and that is the title of this series. The title of this series is A Weary World Rejoices. So on the count of three, as fast as you can, I want you to say, A Weary World Rejoices. Ready? One, two, three. A weary world rejoices. I heard a couple mess ups, but that's pretty good. You guys sounded good. Give it up for yourself. You guys sound great. Um, there's a uh, famous Christmas carol called Oh Holy Night. Anybody ever heard of it? Have you heard the real, like the actual, the true version, like the best version, you know, Mariah Carey singing it? Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, you need to, on your way home, on your way home, play Mariah Carey, Oh Holy Night. It will change your life. If you're not saved, you will be saved by the end of that song. I promise you. But there's one, there's a phrase in that that we are using to kind of dub this entire Christmas season, and it is those those words, it's a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Now, we live in a time that is filled with fear, hate, division, stress, anxiety, isolation. I feel like if there was a more apt time to describe a weary world, I don't know when it would be. How many of you know that right now, globally, everybody's just a little tired. How about you? Anybody here just a little tired? Yeah. We wanted today and this series, one, to be fun. That's why I'm dressed like a fruitcake. Um, we, we, wanted it to be, we wanted it to be fun. We want it to be something that you leave every single week this month of Christmas going, okay, I can do it. I got some joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The reason that most Christians are weak is because we do not have a lot of joy. And so joy sometimes, while it is not happiness, and we talked about that um, uh, many times over the past uh, six and a half years, um, there, there's something about being able to laugh and be happy that does help trigger some joy. And so that's, that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we wore stretchy pants last week. That's why, that's why last week Tina threw out Hershey Kisses and big Hershey Kisses for people and little Hershey Kisses all over the place. And then that's why last week they had people yelling unclean because we, we're trying to get you to just be able to, to shake out of your comfort zone a little bit and realize that church can actually be fun. Not just for our kids, although that is huge. But we want it to be something that, that lets you leave here with a smile on your face today. Why? Because, because Christmas is already a stressful time of year. Um, the highest rate of suicide, anxiety, depression, all, all that historically happens in December. Um, and we've already had higher numbers than any record December we've ever seen throughout this year. And so to counterbalance that, we've got to come up with ways to be able to experience positive things for mental health, for emotional health, for all of that stuff. And one of the best medicines, we've said it for generations, is laughter. And so we've tried to do that some today, and we're going to do that some tonight. We're going to have some fun this evening. But as we enter this Christmas season and, and officially today kick off Christmas at Encounter Church, um, I want you to understand that if you're feeling weary, you are definitely not alone. If you're here and you're tired and you're stressed, you are not by yourself. In fact, you could even say that being weary and worn out is not just an acceptable, but it is a preferable place in which to approach the Christmas season. Because the Christmas season is designed to bring hope. And so if you're here and you feel like you're the farthest thing from hope, then you are in the right place at the right time because this is the place that brings hope. And so what we want to do is talk to you today about the hope of Christmas, that it's not very far away. And even though it feels like maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you just want to kind of unplug for a minute, maybe, maybe you want to put the blanket over your head and do Christmas next year and forget about it this year, what we want to do is we want to help you realize that this is the time of year that even though it may seem distant, even though it may seem impossible for you to feel hope this year, maybe, maybe you've lost your job, maybe you're feeling isolated from the people that you love. Maybe you're even grieving 
loss right now. Maybe someone close to you or, or, or a friend of yours or someone very close to someone that you love has, has, um, has been affected this year. Maybe, maybe we've lost someone to the virus. Maybe, maybe it's just life and we've lost people that we love. And you feel like you're grieving this year. Maybe you said at Thanksgiving and there was an empty seat at the table. And you feel like everything is dark and everything is pressing in around you. I want you to understand that as your eyes adjust to the darkness and you, you do that blinking just for a little bit, before you leave here, you're going to see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. That the hope of Christmas, the light of Christmas is on its way in, even in the weight of sickness and death and injustice and in pain, you can be able to experience something that's not as heavy as you're feeling right now, Amen. but that will change your life forever. That's what Christmas is all about. There's a reason I love Christmas, and I do. I love everything about Christmas. I love everything from Santa, which some of you guys say, if you change two word, letters around, it becomes Satan. You're weird. <laughs> it's still, it's just Santa. He's just a guy in a red suit, man, like, like Zach right here. He's just a guy in a red suit. Like, <laughs> like I love everything about, about Christmas. I, I love Santa. I love, I love reindeer. Uh, my, my Jeep right now has antlers and a big red nose on the front of it. Um, I, I love everything about Christmas. I love singing Christmas carols loud for all to hear. Which means I also love Elf. The reason I love all this is because this is the one time of year that, yes, it's stressful, and yes, there's stuff going on, but we can stop and actually be able to be kids again. And some of y'all are too old for that. You're too mature for that. You're too sophisticated for that. And yet, you're here in an ugly sweater with lights on it. And so we, we want you to smile. But it reminds me of some people 500 years before the birth of Jesus. You see, for 500 years, we call it the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, whatever. For 500 years, there was no voice from God. From the time of the closing of the Old Testament to the time of the opening of the New Testament and the heralding of the birth of Jesus, there's 500 years, give or take, of complete silence from God. Now, some of us have made it through 2020. We're three weeks away from the end. We're like, yes, we made it. Thank God we can't wait to 2021. And hopefully that light switch happens that everybody's hoping for. And all of a sudden, 2021 is everything back to normal. I wouldn't hold your breath too hard, but that's kind of what we're hoping for, right? But these people had done this for 500 years. And we made it eight months. And some of y'all are like, we're done. 500 years, guys. Some of you guys, if you come like week after week and you don't hear a great message every Sunday, you're like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I can make it. These 500 years. So pretend you came to church for 500 years. They sang the same song. You got the same message for 500 years. You know what the message was? Messiah is coming. Messiah is coming. Messiah is coming. Some of you guys are 30 years old and you've heard that Jesus is coming back for 30 years and you're already over it. 500 years. And it seemed like the darkness was so dark, there was no hope. God's people are crying out for the Messiah and nothing. But though he felt like he was very far away from them, God was much closer to his people than they knew. Because gently and quietly in the background, Jesus' entrance is being planned and is being put into motion into the world. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at some amazing people and this story from some viewpoints that maybe you haven't heard before. Today, I want to start looking at it from the eyes of Mary, the mother of Jesus. I want to use a couple of verses that um, have been recorded in what we call Mary's song or the Magnificent. I want to read this because I want you to see Mary's response to some very, very ridiculous claims over her life. Luke chapter 1, verse 46 Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my soul rejoices in God, my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation for all who fear him. So stop just for a second right there. Mary has just received this absolutely incredible news. She's received news that she is going to have the Messiah. Now, she is a young girl, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15, 16 years old. She is not, um, 
you know, a mature young lady. She's not, she's not somebody who's got her life figured out yet. She, she's somebody that this, this great news has been dropped on her. Now, I will tell you this. Her first response was the exact same response that you and I have. Her first response was to be scared to death. Not only has she been told now she's going to be pregnant and she is a child herself, not only has she been told that, but she's been told it by an angel, guys. Now, you sit here all stoically and quiet, but if an angel comes to you in the middle of the night and says you're going to be pregnant, every one of you is going to freak out, <laughs> especially the guys. But every single person in this room, if an angel appears to you in the middle of the night and you wake up, you're thinking two things. One, I should not have eaten that last piece of pizza. <laughs> two, what in the world is going on right now? And she's feeling just as scared. 500 years, no word from God. 500 years, no voice from God. 500 years, nothing. All of a sudden, boom, middle of the night, angel shows up. She has no, she has no background knowledge for this. She has no experiential knowledge knowledge to pull from of other people that she knows that have experienced angels. 500 years, God is quiet. And now all of a sudden, an angel shows up. First response she has is fear. Second response she has is, I'm crazy. Okay? Just like you and me. But it is not that response that is the most important. It is what she does when she processes the information that makes Mary truly incredible. Because her first response is, I'm young, I'm engaged, and now I'm pregnant from an angel or something. What is my family going to say? What are my parents going to say? What's my community going to say? Are they going to call me before the priest and excommunicate me out of church? What is going to be the response? What is Joseph going to say? Because think about it, guys. Ladies, think about it just for a second. You're engaged to this guy, and all of a sudden, you got to pick up the phone and call him and say, hey, by the way, you probably want to do it by text, just so you know. And, hey, by the way, Angel came to me last night. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Somebody said, sure, that would be Joseph's first response. In fact, it was Joseph's first response, because the Bible says he was going to put her away privately. You know what put her away privately meant? Old Testament. She was a harlot. She would have been stoned. She would have been put to death. He was going to do it quiet so it didn't embarrass everybody else. But that was, his, that was his response, right? So Mary sitting here in complete fear is absolutely normal. And sometimes when God speaks to your life and tells you stuff, the first response that you have is fear. In fact, sometimes it's not even God that speaks to you. Sometimes it's life that speaks to you. And some of you are sitting here right now through eight, eight and a half months, wherever we are right now, through this whole thing, and you have been affected at one level or another, you're frustrated at one level or another, and every single person at one level or another fights fear every day. Is the person I'm talking to going to infect me? Am I going to infect them? Is somebody I know going to die? Are we ever going to not have to wear a mask again? What in the world is going on in our society? Who's the president? Well, I know who it is. No, you don't. Nobody does. Siri thinks she does, but she knows everything, so maybe she's right. I don't know. We don't know. We've got all of these unknowns, and that's what brings fear, and that's what brought fear to Mary. Mary had unknowns. She didn't know what was going on, but it wasn't the first response that makes Mary important. It's the next response that makes Mary important. Because Mary takes time to process this whole thing. She takes time to go through this whole thing. And where she settles is not in fear, but in faith. Look at verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. What a statement. What a statement. I am the Lord's servant. Whatever you're going to do. It may not be easy. In fact, for the next couple of months, nine to be exact, it's not going to be super easy. People are going to point and stare as I'm walking down the street. People are going to say something about me as I'm walking into the marketplace. People are going to talk about me because I left to go to Elizabeth and then I'm coming back with a kid. People are going to say some stuff. But whatever it takes, I want to do what you've called me to do. Because here's what I understand is that the moment that the angels start singing, all the rumors get put quiet. 
You see, God has a way of making sure people see his will pretty clear and pretty loudly. Later on, Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, goes to spend some time with Elizabeth, which is what they did when they wanted to have a baby so that nobody would pick on them too bad. She went to see Elizabeth. Elizabeth says this to Mary. She said, you are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Let me say that again. You are blessed because, everybody say because. because. You see, there's always these, these statements in Scripture, and they, they always follow a but or a because. You've, 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 you follow God but. And this is what you're going to end up receiving because you didn't believe. You, you believe to a certain extent, but, but Elizabeth doesn't, doesn't, doesn't conclude this or doesn't uh, use a conjunction or a phrase that, that, that goes with a but. She, she says, because. She said, you are blessed. Not, not, not because of the fear. Not even necessarily because of the angel. You are blessed because you believe. You, you want to know how to you want to how to get through the rest of 2020. You want to know how to get into 2021 and be able to experience God's blessing and favor for your life. Do you want to know how to get to a place where you can rejoice in darkness? Is you have to understand that I need to believe what God said about me already. You see, every single person in this room, God has already spoken something over your life. God has already spoken something for you to become. God has a purpose and a plan for you. The, pl the thing that makes you amazing is when you stop and say, I actually believe what God said. Amen. Wouldn't it be crazy if we did that? If we read the word of God and we applied it to our life and we actually believe it? Wouldn't it be nice if our typical response to fear would always be Mary's response, a song of praise and hopeful expectation? But Pastor James, that's Mary and I'm not Mary. Right? Some of you guys are thinking that. I'm not the mother of the Messiah. Now, I may be the mother of Beelzebub. Because how many of you know sometimes your kids are crazy? Kids, how many of you know sometimes your parents are crazy? Uh huh. All the kids are like, I'm not raising my hand for nothing. My parents sit next to me and they'll slap me. My parents are perfect. My mom and dad were here last week and. Um, my mom walked in the door and she said, what do I need to be ready for? What have you said about me? I said, well, you've watched the live stream every week. You know exactly. She was, no, no, I'm sure there's some other things. <laughs> we don't raise perfect kids. We're not perfect parents. We're not Mary. Do you know what made Mary so special? What made Mary so special is that when the fear crept in, because she was nothing, she was nothing more or less than us. She was an ordinary person that God planted a dream inside of, which is the exact description of you and me. Now, the type and the analogy and the symbolism is so amazing because God wants to place inside of you a seed that's going to change the world. God wants to put inside of you a dream that's going to turn the world upside down. God wants to use you to be able to birth something that is fabulous in the world today. Now, obviously, it's not going to be the next Jesus, but what he wants to put inside of you is still uh, um, um, overwhelming nonetheless. Because the dream that he's put inside of you is one that's going to change your life and change generations to come after you. So what you've got to understand is that when you respond, when the fear creeps in, when you respond with faith instead of fear, when you respond with I believe, you position yourself to be able to experience something that's going to radically change your world. You see, that's what the Christmas story is all about. The Christmas story is all about not just Mary receiving this fantastic gift that brought about salvation, but you today will experience an amazing gift from God who wants to bring about salvation for your family and for your home and for your life and for your world. You, you see, you're, you're not responsible for what happens to everybody else. You're, you're not responsible for what happens in the world today. I know we think we are, and we think we're making such a big difference on social media. Here's the problem, is there's a bunch of different opinions out there. I've got my opinion. In fact, if somebody would just listen to me, we'd clean this whole mess up. <laughs> whole thing, everything, from corona to president to... Everything, everything. I can fix it all. Every bit of it. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody's listening to my opinion. Here's the reality. Nobody's listening to yours either. So what do we have control over? We have control over our response. 
we can respond with frustration, anger, anxiety, and fear, and we can begin to retreat, and we can isolate ourselves, and we can say, I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a prepper. Now, I'm not busting on you guys that you're preppers. If you're here and you're a prepper, I'm coming to you for toilet paper one day. But, <laughs> but there's, and, and there's a balance between fear and faith. You've got to understand that. Faith is not running vicariously through everything. Because there's using wisdom, and there's preparing and, and planning and all the stuff we have. But there comes a point where we can get out of whack one way or the other. And we're no longer looking at what does God say and want to do in our life. We're looking at human responses to things. And that's where our life goes crazy. Look at Mary's response. Mary has visited Elizabeth. She's, 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 she's turned her attention to God. She's writing this song that we've read, this magnificent, which literally means my soul glorifies the Lord. That's what magnificent means. It means my soul glorifies the Lord. She's, she's taken a few things from her life, and she has used those to turn her response to God in a place of worship. And there's a couple of things from this I want you to get I want you to see. The first thing is this. It's going to be help you, helpful when fear creeps in so that you can be able, as a weary person, to rejoice. The first thing is that she began with praise. She began with praise. She starts the whole thing out by understanding it's not about her. It would be absolutely amazing if this Christmas season we could understand it's not about me. It's also not about you. It's not about Santa. I love Santa. I know him. <laughs> it's not about a Christmas tree. I love Christmas trees. Weird tradition, bringing a tree in your house, setting it on fire, but we do it. It's not about presents, although it is about the greatest gift. It's not about tinsel, and it's not about whether or not it snows, thank God, because we're in Arkansas. But it is about Jesus. So we do all this other stuff, and we have fun, and we wear ugly sweaters, and we wear stretchy pants, and we light Christmas trees, and we exchange presents, and we sing carols loud for all to hear. But here's what we understand is through the middle of all of that stuff, everything we're doing is designed to bring glory to Jesus. So while we're having fun and we're wearing ugly sweaters and we're talking about all this stuff and we're celebrating and throwing full-size candy bars to the crowd, while we're doing all of this, we're understanding that at the end of the day, when all the fun is over, it all comes back to us saying, okay, God, thank you for an amazing event. Now let me focus on you for a second. Because you're really the reason we're here. Mary begins with praise. She understands it's not about herself. The second thing Mary did is she remembered that she is just a part in God's story. She's an actor in a play. Her part of the story, when it ends, does not end the whole story. Look, look what she said in verse 48. She said, For he took notice of me, his lowly servant girl, and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Now, that's a big statement. All generations are going to call me blessed. But she did not make that statement based upon who she was. In fact, she said, I'm just a servant girl. I'm a lowly servant girl. I am nobody. But because he took time to notice me, now because of that, all the nations of the world will be blessed. I want you to understand something, that Jesus is taking time today, right now, to notice you. He knows who you are. He sees the depths of your spirit and your soul. He knows everything about you. And because he is taking the time to notice you, through you all the nations of the world will be blessed. Isn't that amazing? Mary understood who was in control. She understood the one that created her and empowered her. She was his creation. And it was this reminder that allowed Mary to focus on the truth of who she was and who he is. Many of us think that when our chapter ends, the story ends. In fact, some of us think that when the chapter of some specific event within our life closes or ends, that our story ends. Maybe your last relationship ended in divorce, and at that end of divorce, that chapter closed. Maybe you just got laid off for a job, and you feel like that chapter has closed. And you think because that chapter has closed, you're at the end of the book. Let me tell you, you're not at the end of the story. 
In fact, all you are is at the end of the chapter, and you can begin the new chapter by turning the page. In fact, if you were watching a movie, that would be exactly where they would put a commercial. That doesn't mean the show's over. It just means we're going to a commercial break. If you were watching American Idol back in the day, that's exactly where Ryan Seacrest would be like, you'd find out after the break. You see, that, that closing of the chapter, that closing of that portion of your life does not mean that the story has ended. In fact, it just means it's time for a new chapter. This is what Mary understood. She understood a new chapter was getting ready to open up in her life. Prior to this, she's a lowly servant. Prior to this, she is nobody. Prior to this, she is nothing more than a 16, 15-year-old girl who's doing the same thing that every 15 or 16-year-old girl is doing, living her life, doing her thing without God speaking for 500 years. But now, all of a sudden, everything's changed. What would happen in your life if you realized that when God ends a chapter, closes a chapter, it is to open a new chapter, and everything changes for a reason? We're so holding on to the old normal so bad we can't stand ourselves. When God wants to do is take us to a new normal that's going to be better than the old normal anyway. You see, what God wants to do is take you to another level, another place, another perspective. God wants you to understand and realize that you are, you are in the middle of his story. And his story is going to be so much bigger than your story. So what is our job? Our job is to make sure our chapter is the best chapter anybody can ever read. That's my goal in, my, in, in life. My goal in life is not to get to the end of the chapter and somebody read it and go, wow, that was kind of boring. <laughs> my goal in life is you get to the end of my chapter and you go, wow, that was the best chapter ever. Not because I want to be all that, but because I want to give all the glory to God. I want to make sure that I live my life to bring glory to Jesus Christ. And if I can live my life to bring glory to Jesus Christ, and you can live your life to bring glory to Jesus Christ, when they read your story, they're going to go, that was an amazing story. Because when you read Mary's story, you say, that was a fantastic story. One that we're still talking about today. Because she realized she was just a chapter in God's story. Look at Psalm 103. David said this. He said, praise the Lord, my, all my soul, my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all of your sins, heals all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. That's what he does with your chapter. He pulls you out of the pit and he begins to redeem you. He satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Which brings me to point number three is that Mary remembered God's goodness and his justice. You see, Mary did not just reflect on the blessings of God. Mary did not just reflect on the 500 years of promises that she had heard her entire life, but she reflected on the fact that when God says it, he does it. Verse 51, continuing this song, His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down the princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. Mary dispelled fear with praise. She dispelled uncertainty with certainty. She began to move from a place of saying, God, I don't understand to a place of saying, God, you do understand. She replaced her fear with faith that he is a just God, that he is a God that does what he says he's going to do, that he is a holy God, that he is a God that when he speaks, it becomes true. And I believe that God said some things over you today, just like he did Mary, to put you in a position to be able to receive what he wants to do in your life. Mary was able to get to a place where she put aside her insecurity for the truth of who God was. She remembered her role in his story. You see, here's our problem sometimes. Mary calls herself a lowly servant girl. You know what, what we, we do? Instead of remembering our role in his story, we want to think about his role in our story. Well, God, you don't understand. This is what's going on in my life. I need you to come down and intervene in my story. I need you to move in my life. And God's saying, I'm already moving. I'm just moving in the context of the whole. And you're a part of the whole. Stay in the whole, and I'm going to bring everything about that needs to happen. But when you start pulling yourself out of the book, your chapter doesn't make sense anymore. Anybody ever read one chapter out of a book, and you made a decision of what the book was going to be? And then you actually read the book, and you go, wow, it was nothing like I thought. 
because you made a, an entire assumption on one chapter. Some of you guys are looking at the chapter you're in in your life right now, and you've made an assumption on the whole. And God's like, no, nah, I'm not done yet. I'm not finished yet. You're looking at one year out of the course of history, and you've made an assumption of what's going to happen forever based on one year. This one year has been horrible in most cases. For some people, it has been the best year ever. So it's a matter of perspective, right? For some people, things have gone well. If you own a mask-making company, you've had your best year ever. <laughs> perspective. Stop pulling the chapter of your life out and trying to understand the whole from your chapter. Put yourself back in the book and say, God, what are you trying to do in the world today, and how can I be a part of what you're doing? What Mary understood was God was getting ready to do something that was going to transform history, transform the future of humanity, not just her story. She could have got caught in her story and said, wait, 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 people are going to say this about me, people are going to talk about me, people are going to... I don't want to do this because this, is, this makes my story look bad. There are some of you guys that are in the middle of, of what seems to be a really bad story right now. Some of you guys are here and you didn't buy stock in a mask-making company. You, you, you bought stock in amusement parks. And you're feeling like your world is bad right now. No. No page you're on. Turn the page. This Christmas season is about opening the next chapter. We're getting ready to go into a new year. Turn the page. Allow God to speak into your life in the middle of chaos and say, it's not done yet. It's not over yet. You're just in the middle of a story that right now you're feeling insecurity. Right now you're feeling fear. Right now you feel like a failure. Turn the page. Because we're getting ready to come back from a commercial break. And on the other side of the commercial break, you start seeing some things you didn't know on the first side of it. Mary dispelled fear with praise. She put aside insecurity of the truth of who God was. She remembered her role in the story. She got past her concern of rejection and gossip and fear. She started to realize that she is a servant of God, and the God that she served is a God of holiness and justice. And because of that, Mary was able, in the middle of weariness and tiredness and disillusionment and ups, being upset and not having clarity and not having certainty for her life, she was able to find hope, and so can you. Today we officially kick off Christmas, we light the tree, we wear ugly sweaters, we eat candy bars, we throw out things, we laugh, we pick on each other, we turn our shirts on, so to speak, we wear naked Santa Clauses, we eat too many cookies, we spend too much money on presents, we bring outside living plants into our home and put lights on them and miscellaneous ornaments. We sing carols loudly. We enjoy socially distanced company with friends and family. We light fires and stand around them and roast marshmallows and drink hot chocolate. We do all of that because this time of year reminds us that there is hope. So what are the three steps that you've got to take when you're in the middle of a weary world? First, every single day when you wake up, begin with praise. David said, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Notice that is an emphatic statement. It is a command. It is not a question or a request. Every day when you wake up, Put it on your mirror, plaster it on your forehead, paint it on your spouse's head. Today I will rejoice. Make a decision every morning. I know what tomorrow is going to hold for me. I know what I've got to do tomorrow. And some of the things I've got to do tomorrow are not going to be fun. But I make a choice in the morning to wake up and to rejoice and to say, Today is a day that God has given me. His mercy is new every morning. He loves me today more than he loved me yesterday because I'm still here. Amen. And it may stink today. And by the time it's done, I may not have a lot of rejoicing, but I'm going to start it off right. 
Put on some music, put on something to cheer you up, put on something that's going to make you happy. Not the news first thing in the morning, because that's not going to make you cheery or happy. Make a decision. You too can remember your part in the story. Your chapter is not complete. And when the chapter does close, there's a next chapter waiting. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope, a hope, a hope. This is the season of hope and a future. And then you too can be reminded that God is just, God is holy, and God will do exactly what he promised to do. He gives us a command in Isaiah. I love, I love the prophet Isaiah. He said this, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Do you know what he's saying to do? He's saying, be like me, because that's what God does. God is a just God. God. God does right. He seeks justice. He defends the oppressed. He, 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 he takes up the case of the fatherless. He pleads the case of the widow. What does God want us to do? He's like, I, I, I want you today to just be like me. Now, that's a big chunk to bite off. But if we can stop today and say, Jesus, I want to realize my peace, my portion in your plan. When I'm weary, I can rejoice. When I'm tired, I can rejoice. These are the things that Mary did that caused her to have hope, and you can too. One of the ways we're going to do that today before we leave is we're going to take communion together. In fact, if you don't have one of the communion kits, just slip your hand in the air. The ushers are going to come around to you. and They're going to make sure you've got one. But listen, I want you to understand this. This body that we're talking about that represents Jesus, many times we talk about it generically that it represents the body of Jesus. But around here we try to, every time we take communion, and we do it about once a month or so, we try to make us understand that it is not just remembering generically the body, it's not just remembering overall the body, but it is remembering what the body of Jesus meant to our lives. And so today, here's what it means. It means that we are a piece of the, pl- of the body. We're a part of the body. We're a part of the plan and the purpose that God has for our life. When, when we remember this, it's also not just about Easter, guys. Most of us think, oh, we're, we're talking about Easter. No, we're, we're talking about that baby born in Bethlehem. Back in the 90s, Kirk Franklin wrote a song, phenomenal song, said he was born to die. That the the day Jesus was born, he was born for one purpose. He was born to go to a cross. So when we rejoice the cross, when we rejoice in what is getting ready to happen at Easter this year, and we we get to a place where we can celebrate that, and maybe we'll actually do an Easter service this year. That'd be weird. We were all quarantined last year and did it from my living room. But as we're remembering this today, it's not about Easter. It's about a baby that was born. It's about a word that was given to Mary. That tomorrow is going to be different than today. I love the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is tomorrow is going to be better than today. Yes, it's a message of eternity. Yes, it's a message of right here, right now, giving your life to Christ in a relationship with Jesus. But it is a hope. It is faith. It is seeing things that are unseen. It's believing for something that we don't have right now. It's a hope that because of this sacrifice, tomorrow will be better than today. And so, Jesus, I thank you today that we understand and know that all this stuff we do at Christmas, yes, it's fun, and yes, we enjoy it. But at the end of the day, it's all about you. God, I thank you for your body that was broken for me on Calvary, but before that, a long time before that, was born in a manger, in a stable in Bethlehem, a place where babies should not have been born, so that you could experience every aspect and gamut of life. And so, God, right now, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made in Bethlehem for me to be born, to leave your throne in heaven, to become like us so that we could become like you. 
We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Jesus, I thank you for your blood that we're reminded of through this juice, this simple act. Blood that was shed for me on Calvary that washes away all of my sin, all of my shame. God, if there's anybody in this room right now that, that would say, I don't know who Jesus is, but just like Mary, I believe. I believe that what he said is true. I want to know more about him. I want to know what this chapter means for my life. And so, Jesus, I believe. I believe who you are. I believe that you're the son of the living God. I believe you died on a cross for my sins. I believe you were born in Bethlehem in a manger. I believe that you love me even when I'm unlovable. And I believe that you're taking away my sins right now. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of the actions that have caused separation. Forgive me of the decisions that I've made have brought hurt to you or to other people. I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. And as I drink this juice, let it symbolically, but also spiritually, let it, let it wash me. Let me stand before you holy. Let me turn the page to the next chapter today. In Jesus' name. Now, if we can't across this building, can we just stand to our feet? Can we just lift up our hands? The Bible says to lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Maybe this is different from the background you're from. It, it just simply means, God, I surrender to you. I'm not going to fight you. It, it, it's, it's a symbolic nature of us saying, Jesus, fill me with your presence and your love, and I'm holding nothing back. My hands are, are open. My, my defenses are down. I serve and honor you right now. So, Jesus, as we kick off today officially with tonight and the tree lighting Christmas season here at Encounter. God, I ask you to let everything come back to being able to worship you. Let us begin and end in worship. God, let us realize that we are a part of your story and you're not done writing yet. It may seem dark right now, but the light is at the end of the tunnel. We're going to keep walking through the tunnel. I love how David put it, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you're with me. So, God, I'm going to keep right on walking, even when it's quiet, even when it's dark, because I know you're still writing my life. God, I'm going to remember who I am. I'm going to remember who you've called me to be. And I'm also going to remember that you are just. You are holy. If you spoke it, you will not fall through. You've never broke a promise yet. You're not starting with me. God, you're going to fulfill every purpose and every plan. Your purpose will prevail in my life. If I follow you, if I lean into you, if I allow you to have access to my life, I'm going to do that. And so right now, right here together at the beginning of December, God, we give you our life, our heart, our mind. We give you our church. We give you our family. We give you our jobs. We give you everything, God. Write the story of our life. Make it better than we could write ourselves. Make it bigger than we could be able to imagine because you're the God that does everything fantastically. God, move in my life that way. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise today. We love you guys. We thank you so much. You can be seated just for a moment. Brian is going to come out here and close this out while he's doing so. I want to remind you, next week is the Christmas offering. It's going to go for our kids. I think we've got a picture of the floor we're trying to do. We would love for you all to be able to be a part of that next week. Brian's going to talk more about our giving and help you uh, figure out how to do that. We love you. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Wow. Man. Thank you guys so much for being here this week. Uh, man, can we just give Pastor James a huge round of applause for that word? How, how are we going to respond out of fear or out of faith? Man, that's such a needed message in this season right now. So uh, thank you so much, Pastor James, for that message. I'm glad that I'm part of a church where the, the pastor challenges us every week to grow a little more and more. You know, uh, how many of you have ever heard of covid yeah, like everybody in this room, right? So we're going to start doing things a little different here for a little while at Encounter Church. Uh, when we take up our offering, we're actually going to be uh, giving you a chance. If you look at the back, we got a couple of our ushers back here with their hands up. Come on, raise your hand. There we go. Yeah, they got them up. Uh, they're going to actually be taking your offering up as you walk out today. And then also you can be giving through uh, the four ways, cash and check, mobile app, online, or text the amount to 84321. Uh, just to be able to keep us all from putting our germ-infested hands in the same bucket and everything. We're going to do that to 
to help us uh, control this spread and, and protect you guys a little bit more. But uh, today, as we think about offering, uh, I was thinking about, I read this book, and it's called uh, Letters to the Church, and it's by Francis Chan. And one of the first things that the book said, like, is any of you ever read a book that, like, when you just opened it, you just knew what you were supposed to be reading it? Well, when I opened this book, one of the first things that it said, it, it challenges you to stop and take a moment and just think. Uh, if you were, you had never read the Bible before, you had never been to church before, and this is your first time to ever read a Bible, what would church look like? Would it look like what church looks like right now? And it's easy for me to give to Encounter Church because I believe that that's exactly what we're doing here at Encounter Church. When I look at that verse, Isaiah 1, 17, it says, learn to do right. Well, when we give, we're, we're giving towards that. We can do this right here. We can come here on Sunday morning and learn to do right. We can seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of, of the fear, fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. You know, through missions, through kids, through teens, we're exercising and practicing all these things. So don't hold back. Whatever God's telling you to give this morning, give, whether that's with the ushers at the back or online or through your phone, through text. So uh, let's just bow our heads and bless this offering. Father God, we love you so much. We thank you for the fact that we have anything to give at all, Father, because it's all yours in the first place. Lord, we ask that you would just uh, help us to take this message that James spoke this morning and apply it to our lives daily as we, we walk throughout this week, Lord, that it wouldn't be just something that we left in church on Sunday morning, God, that we would be able to, uh, to take it and apply it to our daily lives. We love you. We thank you for the offering and for the people that are going to give, and we ask that you would just bring supernatural blessing in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. So bam Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing? So guess what? I get to give you guys some announcements. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So listen, this time I came prepared, friends. Online, are you ready for me? Here we go. So we are starting a new security detail. So if you would, after the service, after you pass the ushers, my friends, if you would, go to the welcome desk and talk to Mr. Wayne Lawrence. He will give you more information about that. Uh, you, turn up if you are a youth up in here. Oh, my gosh. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do it next time. But listen, so youth is on Wednesdays at 730. So if you have a youth from the, from the, from the grades of 5th all the way up to 12th, please let them come. It's, it's so amazing. We, we talk about Christ, but we still have fun. And we talk about Christ some more, and we still have fun. So please let them come. Uh, if you would like to join a serve team, my friends, as I said before, if you would, please go meet them at the welcome desk. You can get more information about that. We would love to have you on a serve team because all of you in here are amazing. Um, so guess what? Today is Ugly Sweater Day. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. One more time. Please. Pretty please. Today is Ugly Sweater Day. Yes. That is so I'm so proud of y'all. I'm so glad y'all wore your ugly sweaters. And some of them are really cute and ugly. So can it be cute, ugly? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so next Sunday, December the 13th, is Kids Sunday. Yes, it's all about the kiddos, man. So if you have your kids, please let them come. Uh, and there will be a special friend in E-Kids that Sunday. I wonder who. I'm not going to spill no surprises here. Okay, cool. So, December the 20th, my friends, is our candle light services. So this time we'll have three services. Uh, it'll, be at eight, it'll be 8, it'll be 8.30, 10, and 11.30. I hope to see y'all at all three of them, okay? Uh, no, no pressure, no pressure. I'm just kidding. No pressure. All right. And if you would, if you have your phones, if y'all would, you can take them out now. You can take them out when you leave. But if y'all will, please go and follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Finally, my friends, I'm so thankful you all are here. You all are so amazing. Love you guys. And the most important thing, we'll be praying for you all throughout the week that the week will be amazing. Love you all and have an amazing Sunday. Oh, wait, one more thing. Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot, Miss Deidre. One more thing. Tonight, boom, boom, boom. Hey, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> don't get distracted, I'm so sorry. Okay, so tonight, my friends, tonight at 6.30, I'm going to just say 6 o'clock, 6.30, yeah, 6 o'clock, 
6 o'clock tonight, if you all would, we're going to be lighting up the biggest Christmas tree in Hot Springs right now. Yes! We're going to be lighting that bad boy up. We're going to have some hot chocolate. We're going to be doing some other things. But man, shout out to the homie Teddy in the back back there for all of his amazing hard work. So yeah, so please, everyone is welcome. So please go and bring your chairs, bring your blankets, and we're going to love on each other as a family, but social distance-wise, okay? Anyways, my friends, love you guys. Happy Sunday. <laughs>